to be your will to heal them, please do so. If not, just give them the peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, thank you for letting us get through the hurricane unscathed. But Lord, we know there are many, many people in the eastern part of the state that, that were not so lucky, Lord. But just please be with them, help them, be with them to, to rebuild their, their homes and their lives, Lord. And just let them know that you are with them. Now just be with us in the remaining of this service and let us take a little bit of truth that we can take into our lives and into this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, the flowers on the altar today are given by Linda Langdon, and we thank her for this gift. Uh, now, uh, Megan P., you come up, join me. received the uh, Mr. and Miss Melvin E. Parker Scholarship this year. She graduated from Cleveland High School and is going to uh, Johnston Community College and major in history. And she plans to uh, find work at a historical site, uh, somewhere like Fort Macon, Fort Fisher, different places around the state, which I think is, uh, I think that'd be a pretty cool job myself. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't care much for history in school, but uh, since then, I, I think I'm pretty sharp on it. So you have to check me out sometime. So here you go, Megan, and we thank you very much. I would hug your neck, but things are like dogs. No. <laughs> we thank you. Six feet apart, wash your hands. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> Every time you turn the TV on or gather anywhere, you probably gonna hear it. And evidently it's working here because uh, everybody's still coming back. We haven't heard of any problems. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Uh, next Sunday, I'll go ahead and tell you. Well, I've already told you, but I'm going to tell you again, so we keep our facts straight. Next Sunday, we're going to have a call business meeting after church and vote on uh, Mr. Kevin Jackson as our pastor. Um, anybody that, uh, this is for people on Zoom, I guess, anybody that uh, because of their health condition don't need to be out in crowds and such as that, uh, on Saturday, between the hours of 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. I'll be here at the church office for those people that want to come by and uh, cast their vote. Um, we'll just, won't be nobody here but me, so you ain't got to worry about a crowd. Just come in, uh, cast your vote, and hit the road <laughs> so the next person can. Uh, I guess that's enough for that right now. Anybody else got anything? Any other announcements? I just wanted to say thank you um, for all the donations for paper products and cleaning supplies for the children's home, for the youth. Um, I picked them up last weekend. I was very pleased and, and grateful for whoever put it in there. So thank y'all a lot. <coughs> Any other announcements? Quiet crowd this morning. <laughs> okay, uh, right now we'll have uh, special music from our choir, believe it or not. We've taped enough over the years, so I think we can handle this for a right good while. In this bar. <laughs>
our speaker today, uh, the Reverend Kevin Jackson. You got your name right, didn't you? I have a bad habit of getting everybody's name right. It's wrong up here. So. That's my thing. Um, he's uh, here today uh, basically to give us an audition, I guess you'd say. But he's got a message for us. Um, after he finishes, he's going to stay up here rather than try to get down in the crowd. Uh, anybody that wants to stay after the service, uh, stay in your seat. Uh, maybe he can answer a few questions for you or just visit. And uh, we're ready to hear what you've got to say. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that mask on. I can't tell if you're smiling, laughing, or sticking your tongue out at me. I guess it don't matter. I want you to go ahead and get your Bibles and turn over to John chapter 6. I'm not going to spend any time uh, going over anything about me right now. Uh, what we'll do is at the end of the service, uh, if, if you want to stay behind, you're, you're welcome to. If you've got any questions you want to ask me or anything you want to know about me, I don't know how much has been shared with you, how much hasn't been shared with you. But I'll be glad to stay here as long as you want to stay here uh, and answer any question that you want to uh, have asked of me. It has been a long process. Uh, the COVID has really kind of messed a whole lot of different things up. And so uh, it, it kind of feels like I've been talking with David now for 10 years. But, uh, <laughs> kind of back in the forth uh, ordeal. So, all right, we're going to head right into the service. And uh, we thank you for being here. And I appreciate you letting me come and preach for you this morning. John chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 35. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you so much for all the blessings that you give us. Lord, we ask you right now that you just take this service and use it whatever way that you see fit. Lord, we ask you right now, if you would, just to be with each and every person that's here, open their hearts and their minds. And God, above everything, we just ask you to watch over and keep us. We give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I've got a timer up here I'm trying to keep an eye on. And evidently, I forgot to tell it to stay on. It keeps going off on me. So if you see me swiping, I'm just checking my time, all right? So we can get it all right. If you'll notice in the Bible, you will find out that there are what we call seven I am's of Christ. And it's a good series of sermons, and it's a good series to look through, because what it does, it gives you an idea of what Jesus says about himself. Now, you really get to know somebody when you start looking at what they say about themselves. To this morning, I just want to look at one of them. Uh, but there are seven, and each one describes Jesus in such a way that the world should be able to see him and think, well, you know what? Uh, there's something different or special about Jesus Christ. So this morning you find out in the Gospel of John that it says, I am the bread of life. This is the first of the seven things that Jesus referred to himself as an I am. And this is what Jesus wants us to know about him. So why was the first thing he'd say is, I am the bread of life. Now you must understand that everything in God's word is transcendable through time. What wrote 2,000 years ago still fits into today. And Jesus uses such a statement to get you to understand what it means for him to be that bread of life. So we're going to look at four basic things rather quickly that will help us see what Jesus means when he says, I am the bread. First of all, he being the bread of life means that he's essential. Notice it is the bread of life. Now, if you go to any foreign country, and I've had the opportunity over the years to, to fly over to the Philippines and spend some time out there, you'll find out one of the major staples of any country is bread. <laughs> They've got to have it in some way, whether it be in loaf format, whether it be in a pita format, whether it be in a hard format, or whatever kind it is, bread is a staple of life. You need that bread to survive. Well, unless you're diabetic, then you can't eat bread, amen? <laughs> but you need that bread to survive. And most every country deals with their own type of bread. Why is it every time, y'all don't get much hurricane warnings up here, but I'm going to tell you on the coast, we see it all the time. Why is it every time somebody the hollers a hurricane's coming, you go to the store, there ain't no bread. <laughs> every piece of bread they pull off that shelf, you know, because it is a staple of life. God is saying, Jesus is saying that he is essential. He's essential for life. You cannot live without bread in some format. 
whether it be crackers, whether it be uh, in, in a loaf of bread, however it may be, it's essential for living. Jesus Christ is essential for living. Now, uh, over the years, I have had experience of living through hurricanes and things like that. And of course, power goes out four, five, six, seven days. You learn real fast what you can live with and what you can live without. I was raised at such a time there was no such thing as cell phones. First time I ever took off across country in my little Toyota pickup truck, there was no, I had no phone, no nothing. So if I'm driving to Arkansas to see my future wife at that time, that's where she lived. And it was a, a 16, 17 hour drive. Uh, if something happened in my car, I could go and knock on somebody's house trying to find some way you know, to get back and forth. But that things have changed a lot since then. So what's essential to some of y'all is not essential to me. I mean, if, if they cut off all the cell phones tomorrow, I could find a way around that. Amen. I, mean, I, you know, I have one. I have a smartphone. It made me a bit smarter than what I was before I got it, but I got one. And, you know, so I, and I get all them text messages. I don't tweet. I don't TikTok. I don't do any of that kind of stuff, whatever all that stuff is. Uh, you know, I, I do a little Facebook, and, and I don't do a whole lot of that because I found out. I put my opinion on Facebook. There's somebody ain't going to like it, so I, I don't do a whole lot of that. But um, it's not essential I can live without it. Internet. It's getting to be essential. It seems like everything you do is through the internet now. You can watch television through the internet now. So what we see in our life as essential today has changed over the years. But eating is still essential. And bread is something you've got to have in your life to survive. And that's the way it is with Jesus. It may be of anything else you deal with across this time. But Jesus is essential to life. So he says, I'm the bread of life because it means he's essential. He says, I'm the bread of life because it means that you will be satisfied. Verse 35 near the end said that he shall never hunger. So that means you'll be satisfied. Now, a lot of times when I'm eating, you can tell I love to eat, and I'm pretty good at it. Uh, when, when I eat, I, I want bread. I don't care what kind of bread it is. I want a roll, I want a corn muffin, I want bread. I want something like bread. It seems to satisfy me better. If I have some kind of bread with the meal. Now I know people all the time go on diets and they eat vegetables. Only problem I got with vegetables, my oldest daughter, she don't cook her vegetables no more. She blanches them. <laughs> string beans are not supposed to crunch. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I put that string bean in my mouth, it's supposed to melt in my mouth. And she fixed that string bean casserole. My wife does a great job on it, and I'm sitting there eating out. What is crunchy in this thing? Oh, daddy, that's the string beans. Baby, yeah, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to cook a string bean to death. Oh, if I do that, I'll cook all the vitamins out of it. I take a vitamin pill every morning, cook that string bean. <laughs> when you eat bread with your meal, it helps you satisfy, right? It helps to kind of fill you up. You see, Jesus Christ is satisfying. He will fill that place in your heart and your soul that the rest of the things in this world cannot fill. He is satisfying. So you got to realize when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he's saying, I will satisfy your needs. People aren't satisfied today. You know, you, you buy a car and then you want a newer car. You buy a house, you want a bigger house. Uh, you know, you buy clothes, you want different clothes. It's always something else. Always something different, always something new. And everything on television is new, improved, and better. You ever notice that? The tide boxes have got real small. They're new and improved. I want to see it when they be honest and tell me the old and the worse. But they're new and improved, you know. Everything has changed. We just we we are not a nation that is satisfied. It seems like we always want something more, always want something different. But see, there's a part of us that needs God. And you will not find that satisfaction in anything else but Jesus Christ. You can try to fill it with money. You can try to fill it with friendship. You can try to fill it with activities or anything else this world's got to offer. And it will leave you always wanting more. Just like bread satisfies a hunger, Jesus satisfies the soul. So he was trying to tell the people, I'm the bread of life. I'm essential. You, you can't survive without me. And people, if you don't believe that, just look at this world. It is not surviving. I'm, I'm sorry. Things that are going on right now are... Anytime you're going to go in a store and you're going to see somebody fight because an individual ain't got a mask on, something wrong, okay? I mean, I, I wear a mask when I go out, but somebody comes up to me in the store and they ain't got a mask on, I ain't freaking out. That, that's their, that, you know, that's what they want to do. 
But if that's going to cause you to get so mad that you're going to get in a fight in Walmart because somebody ain't got a mask on, something missing. I'm sorry, something is missing. Jesus Christ says, I satisfy. All right, he goes on in verses 47 through 51. Let's read those. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. And this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, and if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Here Jesus is trying to describe what this bread of life is going to do for you spiritually. Now, if you eat bread today here, you're going to have to eat bread tomorrow. Don't preach out of eat a lot of bread. You eat pizza, you eat bread. I mean, what, just about everything you eat is going to have some type of bread in it. So, you eat that bread, but you're going to have to re eat that bread tomorrow. Do something else tomorrow. One thing my wife hates more than anything else is planning supper. She gets home from work about 6 o'clock, walks in the door. When we had kids, they would meet her at the door. Our daughters would say, Mama, what's your feet? What's your feet? What's your feet? I mean, they would just fall around the house. I'm about as bad. Oh, right, what we have for supper today? She just gives me this look that just cuts right through you, you know. I don't know, did you fix anything? Not me. That's your job. I'll let you fix it. You eat today, you got to eat tomorrow. Jesus says that I have a bread that I can give to you that will sustain your life into eternity. The bread that Jesus is talking about, the type of bread that Jesus is, is the type of bread that sustains us today and beyond. It would be interesting if you could eat something that you uh, didn't have to ever eat again. Now, a few years ago, I was diagnosed as a diabetic back in 2007. And at the time, I weighed well over 300 pounds. And um, I went on for a few years, taking shots and all this kind of stuff. And then I decided I had enough of it. And so I put myself on a diet and I lost 130 pounds, something like that. I uh, went off the diabetes mess and all that kind of stuff, did good for a couple of years, and then uh, decided that wasn't good enough and did it again. You know, gained all the weight back and did the thing all over again. Uh, about three years ago, 2017, I decided to start walking and do it again. So I have, I, I've lost back down. You know, I lost about 120 pounds. I, I don't have to take a shot anymore. I don't have to do all those types of things that you have to do to try to continue to live and sustain life and to keep on going. Jesus says, I am what will sustain you. Just like medicine for diabetes or medicine for something else, but I am what sustains you. This is what will give you life everlasting. It doesn't matter what I try to do. One day I'm going to die. All you got to do is go to a graveyard and see that. And you don't have to be old to die. You can go see just as many little graveyards of young children as you can of older children, or older people. I'm going to die one day. But if Jesus is in my life, I'm going to live forever with him. He says, I am the bread that is everlasting. I am the bread that you just take one time and it will satisfy you for an eternity. I am the bread that will give you something that you couldn't get anywhere else. And that's that satisfaction of the soul. You'll not die. You'll live forever. You'll be in heaven with him. That's what it means to have the bread of life. But now the last one I want to share with you is the longest one. Look at verses 36 and 37. But I said to you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. My wife loves to have our kids over for Thanksgiving. I have two daughters. Both of them are grown, been out of the house for years and years. Got two grandsons. And she loves to have them come over, especially Thanksgiving. And she will cook a meal, I mean, you know, the whole night. Takes her two days to cook it, amen? And we'll set that meal out, and in 15 minutes, they've devoured it. It's gone, you know, just about that fast. But, you know, she can cook all day long and have that meal on the table. But if they don't come and eat it, it ain't going to do any good. See, Jesus says, I am the bread, so I will I'm essential, I'm satisfying, I'll sustain you, but in order for you to get it, you've got to come and take of what I'm offering. 
I used to tell people, I'm fat because my wife force feeds me. Y'all ever done that? <laughs> she pins me to the ground and forces that food. I straighten my mouth. It's all her fault. Well, the reality is I'm fat because I sit down and I keep shoveling it in. Amen. You know, it just it tastes good. I'm going to eat. And I'm the kind of person, if it smells good and it tastes good, my dad taught me to clean my plate. So I'm going to clean my plate, and if you don't clean yours, I'm going to clean your plate, and I'm going to check over there, and oh, well, you, you know what I mean? I want to clean. Preacher, do you not like leftovers? Boy, I love leftovers, but I still think you ought to have a clean plate, you know? My grandson this morning, uh, we were still over there, we stayed with him last night, and he had these little bitty mini um, uh, pancakes, and he, he's not a big eater. He, he was eating them little bitty, bitty pancakes, and he finished, the first thing he did was said, I clean my plate. He flipped that plate over and showed it to me. So he was telling me I couldn't eat nothing he had left on his plate because he didn't clean it. It was done It doesn't matter what you do if you don't come and take, you won't get fed. Amen. Right? If you don't order it right now and they deliver it to you, if you go to or get it, you won't be fed. It ain't going to happen. Listen, you can believe in God all you want to. You can come to church all you want to. But if you don't take what's being given to you, you won't get fed. My daddy was a preacher for a lot of years before he passed away. And I've heard him say many times, I come here on Sunday morning, I prepare the message, and I lay it before you at the altar of the table. And that's entirely up to you when you come and take it. You, you can't make somebody eat. And sometimes people put things on the table that maybe you don't like to eat, right? I don't like broccoli. To me, they're little bitty trees. <laughs> and I'm not eating a little bitty tree. And my wife tells me how healthy it is, and then she dips that thing in five pounds of cheese and she eats it. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a broccoli eater. But now you put banana pudding on the table, then you're gonna have a fight. Because I'm gonna eat that banana pudding. I love, my wife makes a fantastic banana pudding. And I tell people all the time, banana pudding is the only heavenly food. It's in the Bible. You go to the book of Revelations, it says in heaven you will find a tree with every fruit on it. That's my bananas. It says you will find a river flowing with milk and honey. That's my milk and my sweetener. And it says that in the temple will be the showbread or the wafers that they fed the children of Israel in the wilderness. That's my vanilla wafers. I've got banana pudding. Yeah, we go. But all of that doesn't mean a thing if you won't sit down and eat it. Now, I'll tell you what I have learned. That if you want to lose weight, I can tell you how to do it. You about starve your body to death. You have to. And you'd be surprised how little you can exist on. It don't take a whole lot of food. But you still got to eat. And if you don't eat, if you don't come, if you don't do it, then you're not going to live very long. Several years ago, a gentleman in one of the churches I was preaching was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's is a, a very difficult disease for any family to have to deal with. And every patient kind of goes its own route. This particular man went to the point to where he forgot how to eat. It wasn't that he didn't, he just forgot how. And you put food in front of him and he could not figure out how he was supposed to eat that food. And eventually, because of that, he died. Even trying to feed to him, all these kind of things, he died because he just couldn't eat that food. You can have the prettiest meal before you, but if you don't come and eat, <coughs> it won't do you any good. Jesus is saying, I'm here. I'm right here. All you've got to do is come and take. Come and eat. Come and partake. Come and be a part of me, and I'll be a part of you, and then I will be that bread that will satisfy you. <coughs> we are definitely living in a different time. Amen. Um, some people are scared to death of the COVID. Others don't seem to be paying that much attention. Regardless of what you believe or you don't believe, things have changed because of it. From restaurants to businesses that still aren't allowed to open, to churches that can't shake hands or hug. I had a lady tell me, first time I come back to church, I'm having a hug fest. I said, well, you better wait a little while because we ain't doing that right now. You just, you just can't do it. I've even seen things on the internet where people have dressed up in bags to go and hug their grandmothers. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hug my grandmothers. So if he's sick, I guess I'm going to be sick. But I, I mean, you know, but, but they, they do all different types of things. Masks, okay? I hate them. I hate them. Man, I can't breathe through them. You know, uh, 
But I, you know, put my mask on. My, my wife keeps saying, it's just like wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, though I don't like a seatbelt either, but it's, it's something that you have to do. <laughs> Never in a million years would I have ever thought our country would be wearing masks to go to church or wearing masks to go to Walmart. I never thought I'd be going to a restaurant that would have booths and tables blocked off and that as soon as you sat down, you could take that mask off, but if you stood back up, you had to put that thing back on your face. Because I ain't figured out how I get to eat with a mask on. Yeah, I guess you could lift it and die, ah, okay, you know. But as soon as you get through, they sanitize everything then. The thing that got me worried is we've waited now to wash our hands. <laughs> Gee whiz, I kind of hope those who've been serving me food have been washing their hands for a long time. But the one thing that has not changed is Jesus. Whether we do this through Zoom or whether you do it through a recording or, or you do a live stream or however you send it out, it doesn't matter how the gospel goes out. What matters is that the gospel is still going out. And the world today needs Jesus just as much as it did six months ago. Matter of fact, maybe a little more so now. And Jesus says, I know you need me just like you need bread. And just like bread, I'll satisfy you. I'll make you feel full. And just like bread, you have everything that you need through me. But you have to come. You have to come. You cannot accept for somebody else just like you can't eat for somebody else. You've got to come and accept what Jesus has laid out for you. Several years ago, my daddy was alive. He's been gone about 21, 22 years. man came up to him one Sunday. He had preached about the return of Jesus. And uh, he's premillennial. I'm premillennial. That means I believe that Jesus will come back at the beginning of the tribulation period. And he'll call, shout, trumpet will sound, and up your rise. And the man heard him preach and said, well, preacher, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll just stay close to you. And that way, when that trumpet sounds and you start going, I'm going to grab hold of your cocktail and I'll just ride to heaven with you. My dad never missed a beat. Looked at the boy. He said, you want practice? The guy said, huh? He said, you want practice? Well, yeah, yeah. He said, all right, go home. Take your 30-30. Put it between your legs. Pull that trigger and catch that bullet when it comes out the end. He said, now, if you can catch that bullet, then you'll be able to get hold of me when God calls me home. Because just like that, I'll be gone. He's just simply saying, if you're going to go to heaven, you have to come and take. You can't do it on mama's coattail, grandma's coattail. You're not going to be able to stand aside by and grab hold of them and go with. If you don't accept it, if you don't take of Jesus, then you will never, ever be able to make it to heaven. Verses 32 and 35, Jesus Christ said he's the bread that God sent down from heaven so that we may live. Then the people that will listen to him, they said, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And that's really should be our reaction today. When it comes to Jesus Christ, we should say, Lord, would you give us this bread so that I can partake of it, so that I can eat it, so it can be a part of me. That's what Jesus means when he says, I am the bread of life. Once you bow your heads, close your eyes, you can stand, stretch your feet while you're doing it. I'm going to ask the pianist to play something real softly. I know we're not going to have an altar call. I realize that. Mainly because we're just in a situation where we can't get you down here. But I would like to have a response. If God has touched you, if God's talked to you, if this morning you've realized, yeah, God is, even in this time, Jesus is the bread that satisfies my soul. Maybe you just want prayer. Maybe you would just like for for me to remember you, the Lord, in prayer, or, or, or maybe you need to be saved. That's what it's all about, people. Are you ready? Have you taken the bread of life? Have you watched the, 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 the uh, food set before you, and yet you do not partake of it? You think you're going to get to heaven on somebody else's coattails? Maybe as a friend or a family member, somebody that you know, you know they're not a Christian. People, I believe that what we're seeing taking place right now is proof that the coming of the Lord Jesus is closer than it's ever been. One day that bread's not going to be offered. Would you take of it? Would you partake of it? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for the blessings that you give us. We pray right now that you watch over and keep us in all that we do. And Lord, I ask that there be anybody here that has not come, will they come today? In Jesus' name, amen.
and have her play real softly. While she's praying, you just you lift your hand up and say, Preacher, I just want you to pray for me. Pray for somebody that I know. Pray for somebody I know that needs to pray. I just want you to pray for me. Amen. Hands going up all over everywhere. Amen. Amen. If you've raised your hand this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, please see me, do something, don't leave until I can, I'll put a mask on you, whatever we gotta do that I can lead you to Jesus he's waiting, he's here he wants to satisfy you if you'll just come somebody here that hasn't made a decision for you, Lord, I pray that they will. If there's somebody here just praying for a lost loved one, somebody that they know doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that they will see that Jesus called himself the bread of life because he wants us to understand that he is essential and that he satisfies and he give them life eternal. But just like you have to come to eat, you have to come and accept him. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We ask you to watch over and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh... <laughs>